Peace TV English, the solution for humanity. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'm Riyad Ansari and this is Sheikh Mamdouh Muhammad we're here to discuss the importance of the Arabic language to Muslims so Sheikh Mamdouh uh, you're a teacher of the Arabic language maybe you can tell us something about your experiences how you got into the field and uh, thank you for inviting me to share what I have uh, with you and with the audience across the globe uh, first, I started as a teacher of English, and this was long ago, but uh, for whatever reason, for the wisdom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he all of a sudden I found myself in a place that they requested me to teach Arabic to non-Arabs. And uh, it was a real blessing from Almighty Allah. I found myself there, found something that I really love. They tried to get my experience in teaching other languages and utilize it in teaching Arabic to non-Arabs. And from that time, I started enjoying the beauty of the language, which is my native tongue. However, I didn't appreciate how valuable and how beautiful it is until I started teaching it. From that time on, I started noticing some of the mistakes that the students do, some errors, and I started collecting these. And this was the main substance for me to author some of the books and to use some of the methodologies to handle these issues. The first experience started in Imam Muhammad bin Saud Islamic University. Then after that, it was enriched by an experience, long experience in teaching Arabic language in Indonesia for 10 years. Then the last stage was teaching Arabic in different schools and universities in the United States of America for almost 17 years. Uh, this is in brief my beautiful experience, something I'm so proud of in teaching Arabic language and since I was in Indonesia as well I moved to another level which is teaching the teachers of Arabic how to teach effective or how to use effective methods in teaching Arabic and I think this is something that we need to utilize because if we start from the lower level we need a lot of expertise to teach the children so I think if we start with adults with teachers uh, they can teach, every, if we, for example, if we teach a class full of uh, 30 or 40 teachers, after a couple of months, they can teach 40 classes. And in this way, uh, Arabic can spread quicker than uh, if we start from the beginning with young children. Now, this does not affect this. However, I think that this is the shortest way to make Arabic spread in different places. How about your experience as a student of Arabic? I'm quite sure that you know Arabic quite well, as I've seen well, myself. Well, I'm still learning it. Okay. I don't think a non-native speaker ever stops yes. learning. But, um, well, when I accepted Islam, this was in 1979, and I sat in a class with children from the age of four to about 12, this was in Pakistan. I accepted Islam in Pakistan. I entered a madrasa, Karachi. So the teacher, I would go to him and he would uh, point at the letter okay. and pronounce it. And so like that, I learned the alphabet. And then he would start with Surah Al-Fatiha. You know, he recited the verse and then I would recite it after him. And then I would go and sit. And like each day after being given my number of verses I would go and sit and memorize them and then the next day I would go back and recite for him if there was anything to be corrected he would correct me like that so I did that for about six months and during that period I picked up a book on 
Teach Yourself Arabic, one of these kind of books. And I found it just really difficult. Okay. So just tossed it away. <laughs> the book or the language? Well, the book and the language. Okay. I, I decided that at that point I wasn't ready for Arabic, okay. uh, to really study Arabic. But, but I had a copy of the Quran, so whatever surah I was memorizing, I had the, the English on one side and the Arabic on the other. So I was starting to actually pick up words, uh, vocabulary. And uh, so I memorized Juzamma when I was in Pakistan. Right. And then when I went back to America, I just kept reading Quran every day. That's when great. I got out of the madrasa after six months, somebody was listening to me recite. They had some people, they were actually they were reciting Surah Yasin, like it was after Fajr. Okay. So there was a, a group of people, and we were asked to each recite Surah Yasin. So everybody else finished, I was still on the first page. Okay. <laughs> so, but actually, after about another six months of reading every day, I was reading at about the same speed as an yeah, as as average Arabs. person. Oh, that's an average person. Yeah. Which still does, it's Arabic, is not difficult. Yeah, you just have to take it, you know, yes, give it time daily. That's good. And then I was, by that time, after a year, you know, I went back to America. And I didn't really deal with studying Arabic grammar, but I, I continued to memorize Quran. Good. And, you know, I'd learn words like that. So I had some kind of vocabulary. And, and when I'd hear the khutbah in Arabic, you know, I'd pick out words that I knew. So that was a start. And then uh, at one point I was uh, just visiting somebody in an apartment building. And... We bumped in, I, I was with an Arab. We bumped into an American Muslim. And he started talking Arabic to the, to the, Arab. To the Arab. And so I was really kind of astounded. I said, where did you pick up Arabic? He said, I taught myself. Oh. So I said, he can do it, I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> so I got a copy. There's a book by a Bengali scholar called uh, Arabic Made Easy. Okay. And... I went through that, and there was also a book called The Vocabulary of the Qur'an, okay. a man named Penrice, a British writer. So I learned some grammar, and I kept learning vocabulary, going through the Qur'an, and stuff like that. And uh, then when I went to, uh, I got a scholarship to study in Saudi Arabia, and just from what I'd been able to pick up like that on my own, I was able to skip one year of the language program. So mm -hmm. It was a two-year language program. I did it in one year, then okay. went into the college. Sure. And there was one teacher who was teaching us hadith. Hadith related to fiqh issues from Subul Islam. So he would, uh, some of the teachers, when they gave lectures, they would dictate, you know, they would stop and yeah. repeat and like this. He just kept going, you know. He'd talk at normal speed. And so I was taking notes in English because there was no way to keep up by writing in Arabic. So I was sitting near the front. And he's lecturing, and he looks my way, and he stops. And he says, uh, what are you doing? Are you writing a letter home back to your, <laughs> your family at home or something? So I said, no, I can't keep up with you by writing in Arabic. I know what you're saying, so I'm just translating it and writing it down. So He said, oh, okay. <laughs> so th those are some of my experiences. Good, Good to hear that. But finally, you got the language. <laughs> well, yeah, I can carry on. Conversation, okay. I can read, I can translate. That's, that's good. So, what does the Quran have to say about the importance of Arabic language? Uh, the first thing is that the, the Quran says, first, the Quran is in its original form, is in Arabic, which in itself tells you uh, that it is very essential to learn Arabic because you are not going to recite the Quran in your salat or outside your salat without learning Arabic. You can memorize it uh, by repetition and you can say it. However, uh, it becomes very important to understand what you say and what you recite. And therefore, you should know the language. The Quran itself in many verses in the Quran says how important Arabic is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna anzalnahu Quranan Arabiyan la'allakum ta'qilun. We send down the Quran in Arabic so that you understand it, which tells us if you try to understand Arabic in other languages, you will get some of the understanding, but you will not get the full understanding uh, unless you perfect the language, and which is something natural. And you know that a lot of discrepancies and a lot of mistakes happen in the translation in general between any two languages in the world. And therefore, it's considered essential 
to learn Arabic language. And when you go back to the past, you find every scholar, every named scholar, whether, whether he is originally an Arab scholar or a Persian scholar or a Pakistani, Indian, you can name it, all of them perfected the language in order to reach this level of knowledge. You cannot attain the whole knowledge without uh, knowing Arabic language. And therefore, I think it's, uh, this gives the motivation for every Muslim who loves to understand the Qur'an and to teach it to others, a motivation to learn Arabic. Because this is the tool of understanding the language. This is the tool that all the scholars use in teaching uh, this great uh, book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is how important Arabic language is for every Muslim, no exception. And this was the norm in the previous centuries when you find Arabic spreading very quickly in all these uh, countries. Look at Egypt, for example. 80 million people speaking Arabic now. Uh, when the companions came from Mecca and uh, lived in Egypt, they were just few hundred or few thousand maximum. However, the impact was great. Now we have 80 million people speaking Arabic only in one country because of the effect of those few thousands of them. And this, by the way, refutes the allegation that says Arabic is a difficult language. You can see millions of people who are not Arabs are currently speaking Arabic language as their native tongue. So again, this is an important thing to believe that Arabic is not that difficult. Yes, yeah, there are some studies that try to classify languages. One of them, some of them is the most difficult category. They put, for example, uh, Chinese and uh, Arabic and Russian probably on that level. Then they go to another level. Uh, definitely there. But uh, when we talk about the difficulty, also we have to understand everything that may look difficult for a learner. After learning it, it becomes easy. A native speaker of Arabic, his children, when they acquire the language, they would never imagine that this is difficult or not difficult. It's difficult or not difficult for the one who is learning the language, not acquiring the language. There's a difference between the two concepts, acquisition versus learning. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK. B151TH. Pound account number 0113230. IBAN GB49ARAY. 3008301132301. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Marriage or divorce? What's Islamic ruling? Nikah. Solution or problem? Heaven or hell? Uh, there is a misconception. You choose. Beauty, wealth, family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik 
in Better Half or Bitter Half every Friday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Well, with regard to scriptures and languages, I mean, I think that's a, it's really important to realize the role that the Qur'an has had in keeping the Arabic language. Of course, we know that the local language in a place like Morocco or in Algeria, if somebody from the Emirates hears two Algerians speaking their local language, they, they can't really understand what they're saying. Yeah. But still, when they speak standard Arabic, anyone who's, who's an Arabic speaker throughout the world can understand that. So, and the reason that, that they can do so is because of the Qur'an. Yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, the language of the Qur'an, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down this verse, inna nahnu nazzalna wa inna lahu lahafidun, indeed we sent down the Qur'an and we are going to protect it. By protecting the Qur'an, Arabic language, by default, is protected because the Qur'an is in Arabic, and therefore you can imagine that Arabic will live forever. However, as you just mentioned, the dialects are spreading and are used in different places in the Islamic world. And I think the, also the uh, imperialists and the colonizers, uh, especially in the Middle East, in Morocco and in Egypt, and they played a great role in encouraging the dialects to grow. Uh, however, uh, it is doable that the, any country or all the Arab world, they can unite on bringing back the standard Arabic to the media, to the daily language. It's very doable. We've seen it in uh, the BBC English way or the Queen's English. It became the standard English everywhere in the United Kingdom. So it is doable, an experiment that had been done in many countries. So it can be done in Arab countries. It is doable. It needs some effort. It needs uh, the Muslims to pay attention again to this great language. You know, there's uh, so many scriptures now that the language that they were written in Nobody can understand it unless they're a super specialized scholar. Like the Buddhist scriptures, they're written in a language, Pali, which nobody speaks today. And like that, there's so many scriptures that are in languages that a layman cannot understand. You have to be a super specialist to understand it. So the Qur'an, I mean, anybody who, who's gone to a couple of years of Arabic school or like that, they can understand it. So, I mean, 200 million people among the Arabs, I mean, they open it up and they can, they can basically understand it. I mean, there are details. They may have to refer to a commentary. But basically, they can understand the message. It's accessible directly to the reader. This is in itself is a proof what Almighty Allah said in the Quran that he's going to protect the Quran. And this means, uh, this implies that the language is kept until now. It's still the spoken language, the 200 millions or more now, and still spoken in other countries, and still when you go to countries like Malaysia or Indonesia or Pakistan, you still find a lot of people are communicating with Arabic, not in the same levels of Arabs, however, it's still going on. And especially in the last couple of decades, there is a great need in, for Arabic language for business and commercial and probably political reasons, the language is spreading. And for example, in the United States by itself, uh, there's approximately more than 200 schools and universities that teach Arabic language in their classrooms. And the number is spreading very quickly. And I think uh, there's a positive side in us because people, when they understand the language, uh, they will understand the culture of the language and thus uh, they would be more exposed to the uh, Qur'an and to Islam. And uh, I have heard a priest saying, and this was in North Carolina, uh, he said that we are the ones who opened uh, these uh, sections and departments of Middle Eastern studies, and all of a sudden we found, after some time, we had some reasons to open them, some purposes and some goals, but now everything is upside down. We found ourselves, our kids in particular, at these schools and universities are exposed to Islam, the true Islam. And I think this will have its great impact, yes, on changing the way people look at Islam 
because of the language when they know the language. So the language became a good tool to uh, expose the Islamic culture to uh, the non-Muslims, and in this way they would know the essence of Islam. I mean, when I was going to high school, I, I grew up in a suburb of Washington, D.C. The languages that were available to study as a foreign language were Spanish, French, I think Latin, maybe German. There was about three or four. They were all European languages. But I think now, even in high schools, there are some schools yes, that are Arabic. Yes, there are Arabic. I think in, in Fairfax County... In Fairfax they County, they have Arabic in some schools as an option for students to select from, something that was not available just 10 years ago. So there is a window of opportunities open to everybody to learn about Arabic. Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his support in this matter and other matters as well. Maybe you can give us some examples of mistaken interpretations of Qur'an based on translation, people that... Yeah, the, and this again takes us to how important the issue of learning Arabic by yourself. You would be able to go to the dictionaries and verify if the translation is correct or not. One of the most famous... Uh, Mistakes is even in the short surahs when, I wouldn't say even this is a mistake, but I say that this is because of the nature of the language. It, sometimes it's impossible to find a word or a concept that you have an equivalent word or concept in it by one word. For example, the word ahad, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَد uh, One of the meanings of ahad is uh, one. Uh, but in this context, uh, of course, it refers to the word unique more than the word one, which tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unique in every aspect. And so there is a big difference when you translate it as one and as unique. So unique is a better word. Still, it does not carry the exact meaning of the word ahad, but it's still it's much better than uh, the translation of one. Uh, another example is the word samad. When you ask anybody about the word samad, he would say, self-sufficient or eternal, who would give you any uh, translation. Uh, you say there is a sense in the translation, but it does not give you the meaning of the word samad because a samad is a concept rather than a word. And you cannot translate a whole concept in one word unless coincidentally there is this word in other languages, which sometimes it's difficult because Islam came with concepts that are not, were not available in the minds of uh, some people in the world. So the word as samad, the exact meaning of it, is the one who is needed by all his creatures, and at the same time, he needs no one of them. This concept applies only to Almighty Allah. So the word samad, if you say self-sufficient, it does not give you probably 10% of the meaning of the word as -samad. So these are some examples of telling you how important it is uh, to learn Arabic language. And you can see even the understanding. When you understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is needed by all his creatures, he's needed by the sun, he's needed by the planets, he's needed by human beings, he's needed by animals, and all of them rely upon him. And he does not need any one of them. He does not rely on any one of them. Your concept about understanding Almighty Allah is amazing at that time. Yes, and this is one of the secrets and the beautiful things of Arabic language. So maybe you can also give us some insights into some of the beauties of the language itself. Okay. I wish that there is another one to answer this question because I love Arabic. I am a fan of Arabic, not because I am a speaker of Arabic, because really it made me understand the Quran in a way that Every day when I read the Qur'an, I, I become more keen to know more and more. So alhamdulillah. Uh, let, let's talk about the physical beauty of Arabic. Just the physical beauty of Arabic. If you try to see the, all the alphabetical letters, 28, 26, you will find all of them have some, something common among them. I will take the alif apart now. And they'll come back to it. All the rest of the letters have something common in them, which is the curve. All the letters have some sort of curve. 
curvature in it. Among all the letters, what is unique about this? When you look at the universe around you, you will find everything in the universe is curved. The sun, the crescent, the moon, the human face. There is nothing straight 100%. Only the straight path. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us, inshallah, and to give us the straight path. So the analogy between the letters and the creation of Allah that's quite obvious in the nat natural things that we see around us, in the birds and the animals and the flowers, and it's something amazing. And one time in one presentation, I took the alphabet of Arabic and tried to put them on natural things, like the flowers. So every letter when it was put on this background of flowers, it fitted well in one of the angles. Then I replaced them by Latin letters. And all of a sudden you find something straight, yeah, which did not match the natural thing. And by the way, even the alif, when you enlarge it, you don't find it it's straight one. It has some curve in it. And this is again, in learning, it becomes easier because anyone can draw the circle before he or she draws the square because it needs more muscles. So it's even natural physically to write this in addition to its beautiful uh, way of appearance. Uh, there's something very beautiful about the appearance. Uh, I'm quite sure I, I that... I mean, I can see an English defender of English language saying, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Arabic is an infantile alphabet, whereas we're in more advanced. <laughs> Friendly message by Dr. Zakir. Old age home. Al Quran, Surah Al Isra, chapter number 17, verses number 23 and 24 says, Your Lord has decreed that you worship none but Him and that you be kind to parents. Whether one or both of them attain old age in your life, say not a word of contempt. Do not say off to them, nor repel them but address them in terms of honor and out of kindness lower to them the wing of humility and say my lord bestow on them your mercy even as they cherished me in childhood there is no place for old age home in islam beats tv the solution for humanity a friendly message by dr zakir Old Age Home Al-Quran, Surah Al-Isra, chapter number 17, verses number 23 and 24 says, Your Lord has decreed that you worship none but Him, and that you be kind to parents. Whether one or both of them attain old age in your life, say not a word of contempt. Do not say off to them, nor repel them, but address them in terms of honor. And out of kindness, lower to them the wing of humility and say, My Lord, bestow on them your mercy, even as they cherished me in childhood. There is no place for old age home in Islam. Beats TV, the solution for humanity.